All right, good evening, everyone. It is now 6.30, and I will call to order this meeting of the Lincoln County Planning Commission. As a reminder, this meeting is being recorded, and the order of events will be as follows. For each public hearing, staff will introduce the agenda item and present a summary of the staff report. The applicant will then be asked to explain their proposal in further detail and to answer any questions from the Planning Commission members. I will then open the floor to public comment, first in persons in support of the application, and then for persons in opposition of the application. When you step up to the podium, please state your name, address, and speak clearly into the microphone. Speakers are encouraged only to address new and relevant information pertaining to the item. Above all, please be cordial to all meeting participants and refrain from side conversations and speaking out of turn. Uh, we will limit the public input to five minutes. Lastly, decisions on conditional use permit applications may be appealed to the County Board of Commissioners by submitting a letter to the County Planning and Zoning Office within five business days. All right. With that, we will do roll call, see who's all here. Commissioner Hogan? Here. Commissioner Johnson? Here. Uh, Commissioner Green? Here. And Commissioner Jungley is also here. All right. Approval of the meeting minutes. I'm assuming everyone did get the last meeting minutes. Do you see any corrections or changes to make? No. Nope. Seeing none, I will do roll call to, or we have a motion to. I'll make a approve. motion to approve the minutes as, as posted. Second, Johnson. All right, motion and second. I'll do roll call. Commissioner Hogan? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Green? Yes. Commissioner Jungley is also a yes. All right, approval of the meeting agenda. I know um, in some of the packets, I don't think uh, somehow the print didn't come off for number four, but we do have four agenda items tonight as published in the uh, regular meeting agenda. So with that, are there any changes, Mr. Brown? Uh, no changes, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you. With that, I'll ask for a motion to approve. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second, Green. All right, motion is second. No discussion. I'll do roll call. Commissioner Hogan? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Green? Yes. Commissioner Jungley is also a yes. All right, those are approved. At this time, I'll ask for public input on any non-agenda items. If anyone wants to talk, come up and talk about anything that's not on tonight's agenda, please do so. All right, seeing none, I'll close the floor. Um, old business? Anything old, Mr. Brown? Uh, no, none, Mr. Chairman. All right. Um, we'll start with the public hearings. Uh, good evening. Toby Brown with County Planning. Uh, this first application is a conditional use permit for a public utility facility. Uh, the applicant owner's alliance communication. Uh, location is approximately 1.24 miles southwest uh, of the city of Harrisburg. Um, parcel size is 3.0, or is approximately 30,000 square feet. Uh, as you can see, the property is zoned A1 agricultural as well as all surrounding properties. Uh, this is an aerial of the, of the property. Uh, if you recall, in February of this year, you did uh, issue a conditional use permit uh, for a public utility facility on this property. Um, it was for a fiber hut, which is for um, internet service. Um, that that uh, facility or structure is currently under construction and is permitted by the county. Uh, since then, the applicant owner has approached the county uh, with plans to build a second building on the property. Um, this would be a, approximately a 36 foot by 52 foot building uh, that we would label as a warehouse slash office, uh, but in the application materials they listed as primarily a garage. Uh, that would be to the south on the property from where the fiber hut is. The fiber hut would be to the north part of the property there. Uh, so staff did review the application, did have some discussions uh, with the applicant. 
Uh, and staff has identified that this application is consistent with the comprehensive plan and the zoning ordinance. Essentially, what this uh, conditional use permit would do would be amend that uh, conditional use permit that was issued in February. Um, it would amend all five conditions and would place essentially uh, five conditions on uh, that new permit. Uh, and primarily, it's just to conform to the site plan that was dated with the application submittal on April 14th. But three, four, five, and six would all be the, the same, uh, essentially, conditions that you had. The only one that changes is the one that would change the site plan date uh, for the property. Uh, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have for staff at this time. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Commissioners, do you have any questions for staff on this application? See you none. Okay, thank, thank you. you. All right, at this time, we'd like to ask the applicant to come forward and tell us a little bit more about their application. Evening, Commissioners. Andy Halsher with Alliance Communications, uh, 48229, 253rd Street in Garrett's in South Dakota. Uh, the construction of that building is for uh, mainly garage and some warehousing of some materials as we build out the projects around the surrounding areas. Uh, at some point in the near future, we'd probably have one person, one staff member in that location, but they would be moving back and forth throughout, and it would not be uh, a place of business for you know people to drop off things or to pick things up at. So that's about it. So three stall garage, a little bit of an office space, and that's about all. Thank you, Andy. You're welcome, uh, commissioners. Any questions for the applicant? When you originally got the conditional use permit and you just got it for the one building, were you did you not know you needed the second building, or what we, brought this into play here? Sure, the the plan was to do it next summer, um, but things moved forward a little bit quicker. Um, we were approved for another area south of Canton, a South Lincoln County area, so it would expand our footprint. So we thought it'd be better just to get this done and installed and get it ready to go so that we can uh, kind of use it as a warehouse so that we can use it for the installs as we move forward. Okay. Traditionally, we've used a, a huge trailer, brought it on site, and then uh, not really a permanent structure by any means, but this helps with uh, putting a permanent footprint in that location so that we can serve the customers a little bit better. Okay. Will you have trucks or rolls of inner duct and fiber or what, what would you have all in there? Uh, inside the building, uh, just a pickup for right now. That'd be about it. And then um, mainly some, <coughs> some smaller materials, smaller items that we'd use on a daily basis. All the other heavy stuff is kind of in our other offices, warehouses and bullpens that are in closer to Brandon. All right. Commissioners, any other questions? Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. At this time, I'll ask anybody in favor of the application, please come forward. All right. Um, with that, anybody in opposition of the application, please come forward. Seeing none, all right, I'll close the floor to public input and I'll ask a motion from our commission. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would move to approve the amended conditional use permit. Second, Green. All right, motion and second. Um, any discussion, commissioners? All right, seeing none, I'll uh, do roll call. So this is a motion with the conditions and the amended condition. Um, Commissioner Hogan? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Green? Yes. Commissioner Jung is also a yes. Thank you, Andy. Thank you. All right, application number two, Mr. Brown. Okay, uh, the second application is a conditional use permit. It's a conditional use permit for an off-premises uh, sign. Um, subject uh, applicant is Pride Neon and Book Your Billboard. Uh, the owner of the property is DMG PLLC. Uh, location of this property is approximately uh, half a mile, would be southeast of the city of T. 
Uh, parcel size is 2.14 acres, and as you can see, it is zoned commercial, as well as all adjacent properties. Uh, the properties to the west uh, would be the Interstate 29 right away. Uh, property is not developed. It does have signage, off-premises signage currently on the property, um, but otherwise there is no structures other than though that on the property. Um, again, applicant is proposing to construct an approximately 48 foot by 14 foot off-premises sign. Uh, this is allowed by conditional use permit in the C commercial district. Uh, staff has reviewed the application um, and has had discussions with the applicant. Um, has identified that this application is consistent with the comprehensive plan and the zoning ordinance and does recommend the following conditions that are on the screen. Um, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have for staff at this time. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Commissioner, is there any questions for staff on this application? <clears throat> All right. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Toby. All right, at this time, I'll ask the applicant to come forward and talk a little bit more about their proposal. Hi, uh, Zach Negebauer, uh, 4406 South Northridge Circle, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Doug Muth, 7329 South Russet Drive, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. All right, what, what are you guys, can you explain a little proposal a bit more to us? Yeah, right now we have a permit already on a, a sign that's there existing, and it's a dilapidated sign, and we would like to come in and put an investment in it and upsize it and basically put a monopole steel, much cleaner, modern-looking billboard along the interstate. Can you speak in the microphone yeah. a little bit just for recording? A much modern, cleaner uh, billboard along the along the interstate. Right now, it's just a broken down wooden pole. Sure. So, and we um, so everything is DOT spec, um, including our steel. And so, with the winds that we had and stuff like that, too, mm -hmm. it, it would meet the much higher wind standards that they require today that they didn't require some time ago. Imagine us a heck, heck of a concrete footing. It it's is. a big one. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're glad to say we didn't lose one billboard here the, after this last storm. Yeah, so, nice. Yeah. All right, commissioners, any questions of the applicant? Just just for my own mind and thinking, is this going to be like the sign, I believe? Are you guys doing the sign out by the orchards in Harrisburg? Yes, we are. It's going to be like that one, right? Yep. Because yes. I'm on the Harrisburg Planning and Zoning. I'm That's thinking, right. I'm yep. thinking, yeah, that I, yep. this is about the same, correct? Yep. Yes. Okay. This one is physically in size difference, a little bit bigger because on the interstate, which is okay. typically where you see these larger size right. signs. Right. Um, and it's going to be light lit up. The structure will be the exact same as, as the Harrisburg okay. one. Right. A single okay. monopole. And it is replacing the current sign. That's there. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So there won't be. There's not two signs that are going to be on the property. No. Correct. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, guys. Okay. Thank you. All right. At this time, I'll ask anybody in favor of the application come forward and please speak. All right. Um, I'll ask anybody in opposition of the application come forward. All right, seeing none, I will close the floor to public input and I'll ask a motion from the commission. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve with the conditions. Second, Johnson. All right, motion and second. Any conversation, discussion? No, my end, it looks like it's it'll be improving the structure that's there and actually make things probably safer. Big boards falling down or not. Mm -hmm. They good, not good. So, all right, let's do a roll call. Commissioner Hogan? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Green? Yes. Commissioner Jungling is also yes. Congrats, guys. <coughs> all right, um, application number three. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so this third application is an application for conditional use met. This is for a stable. Uh, the applicant... 
and owner of the applicant is uh, Victoria Schwartz. Uh, the owners are Douglas and Dorothy Hamilton. Uh, location is approximately three miles to the southwest uh, of the city of Harrisburg. Uh, subject property is eight acres in size. Um, as you can see, the subject property is zoned A1 agricultural, as well as all adjacent properties. Um, the property, um, this is an aerial that's approximately two years old, but uh, the property is currently permitted and under construction for a single family dwelling on the property. Um, the purpose of this application is to allow for a stable on the property. Um, and I, I do have one quick thing that I'll show you here once. <clears throat> so this will look a little bit different than what was originally in the packet. Um, so the applicant is proposing to construct a stable on the property. And a stable is allowed by conditional use from the A1 Agricultural District. If you recall, last month we did have a stable, and that was a private stable. Uh, but this will essentially be a commercial type stable because in the A1 Agricultural District, you can utilize a stable uh, for uh, for profit, essentially, uh, for utilization of of boarding horses, training horses, and those different types of things. Um, and the, since the application was submitted and after the packet was developed. Um, staff did review and identify that there was some uh, potential wetland on the property uh, where the applicant was proposing to build. And so through discussions with that, and I would say up till today, uh, so the one thing if we do approve this today is that we'll need to amend one of the conditions in there about the date of the site plan. So the date of the site plan will have to change to today's date, uh, essentially because this is the updated site plan that, we, that staff did receive today. Um, so essentially a couple changes to the original site plan that was submitted. The first is to push the, uh, the riding, what I'll call the riding arena, uh, to the north end of the property. Um, that gets it out of the potential risk, flood risk area, um, as well as the open area for that. As well as uh, through discussions, the applicants also identified that they wanted to have some open uh, sided sheds on the property for horses on the property associated with the stable. Um, as well as a machine shed on the property, which will also be associated with the stable. So all of those uh, structures will be a part of the approval tonight in conjunction with it. And so uh, as it will be worded, you would approve a stable on the property, which would then approve this site plan, uh, which would hold them to the size, location of the proposed structures that are on the property. Um, so staff did review the application uh, with the ordinance requirements. And so uh, staff did identify that this application is consistent uh, with the comprehensive plan in the zoning ordinance, um, contingent on uh, the four conditions that were identified. Again, condition number one would have to be modified if approved to be today's date uh, instead of April 21st, 2022. Um, so again, uh, this is allowed in the zoning ordinance. There really isn't no set criteria for a stable, um, but uh, as conditioned, um, it should be appropriate for that location. Uh, I did get an email that uh, was given to you tonight uh, from the township that they have approved a driveway permit and they have no issues or concerns, and that would be Lavalley Township. Uh, so with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have for staff, have staff at this time. Thank Toby. you, Mr. Brown. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, what's, what's the threshold? Um, is it just simply that, uh, like, last... Uh, like a, a private stable versus a for-profit stable or someone that's going to do custom boarding? What, uh, what, what, what makes that distinction? Or yeah. Uh, so zoning. <laughs> so the, so the, for a rural residential zone property, they're not allowed to do anything other than stabling of their own private horses. Right. So in an egg district, if, if this was just for them, if they were just you know, stabling their own horses, it would not require a conditional use permit. Okay. But essentially, since they're proposing a stable that would house other people's horses mm -hmm. and would have other associated activities with it, it does require a conditional use permit. Okay. And to be clear, it's... For this conditional use permits, it's a stable and the other structures that they have. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So, so essentially, it would conform to the site plan that that I just showed okay. you. Yeah. And on that site plan, did, did it say there's an existing home? I don't see one in, in like the aerial. Or Be the, right there. And that's that's already there. It's under construction currently. Okay. And 
and this is not known to interfere with any of the Harrisburg future development or it's outside of that zone. It's, yeah, correct. It's outside of their their growth subdivision authority area. Just barely. I mean, it's probably yeah, like three, three lots. Close on the map. Mm -hmm. Yeah, approximately three lots outside of it. So. Okay. Yep, thank you, Joe. Thank you. All right. At this time, I'll ask the applicant to come forward and talk about their proposal. Hi. I'm Victoria Schwartz. I'm currently at 2314 South Ronsick in Sioux Falls. My name is Bo Copel. 47120 276th Street in Harrisburg. And I guess <clears throat> I'll start off first. So I got hired by the comp or by the, the owners here to do the site plan. Um, the reason the change as of today was we went out and due to drainage and those site those sorts of issues, we uh, decided to move it. So it doesn't impede any drainage concerns. All right. Um, questions? How many okay. horses are you going to board at the new facility? I currently have six right now. I'm a horse trainer. I do show jumping. So as I gain clients, we have up to 15 stalls. Okay. All right. Um, for the drainage and, and that with the, the lower wetland, is there any, do we have to worry about any stuff coming off from the corrals into that or anything like that? I mean, you? nothing more than a standard farm. Yeah. I mean, when it comes to drainage, we made sure that all the buildings were outside of those drainage areas, mm -hmm. um, made sure that they're above that minimum floor elevation. So. All right, commissioners, any further questions of the applicant? See you none. Thank you. Thank you. All right, at this time, I'll ask anybody in favor of the application, please come forward. <coughs> All right, anybody in opposition of the application, please come forward. All right, see you. Now I'll close the floor to public input, and I'll ask for a motion from the commission. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to recommend approval based on uh, Toby's recommendations of the new site plan dated uh, May 16th, 2022, and then the additional three other conditions. I'll second. Okay, with motion and a second. Uh, discussion, commissioners? Good. Yeah. Seeing none, I'll do a roll call. Commissioner Hogan? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Green? Yes. Commissioner Jungley is also yes. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, now we're on to uh, amendment number four or item number four, which is amendment. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so this is an uh, amendment uh, to the zoning ordinance. Um, and essentially, it's an amendment to the section specifically with medical cannabis. If you recall, last year around June, uh, the Planning Commission recommended adoption of some amendments to the zoning ordinance um, to allow uses for medical cannabis. Um, those uh, regulations were adopted on a temporary basis. And so at this time, this amendment would enact those permanently uh, with, some, with some changes that, that staff has identified. And so I'll start out with, uh, so this is the ordinance that I call track changes. It shows essentially the changes that would take place. Um, the first one being is, is that um, to essentially uh, all these different types of uses um, uh, we would identify as not just medical cannabis, but essentially other types. And so if, essentially, if recreational become legalized in the county, then we would have our ordinances up to date at that time forward for essentially those uses. Um, but 
um, these, the first one would be, and I'll go through some of the changes here. So that's the first changes would be to the definition section. Uh, the second section really takes a look at uh, the cultivation. So in the A1 Agricultural District, we allow as a permitted special use uh, cultivation type facilities. And so the changes that would be made here, the strike throughs of course would be the changes. And so um, the main change there would be is to clarify that it's just the setback is only from private or public school um, and that the, all the other requirements, what I'll call use type operations, those would be removed from the zoning regulations. So if you recall that the county uh, commissioners did adopt a licensing ordinance, which did not go through the planning commission, that was adopted by them, which essentially governs the types of activities for the operation of the business. So we, they didn't have that adopted at the time that we adopted the temporary zoning regulations. And so it looks like we're taking away some of these, what I'll call business type activities, but we're not. Those are covered uh, in, in general in most part uh, in the licensing requirement and as part of the issuance of the license requirements. Um, and then uh, in, the, in the commercial district, we allow dispensaries. So the same type of thing, we're clarifying that the setbacks would just be per private and public schools. Um, and again, that those things that are identified as license type requirements would be uh, under the license ordinance or handled by the Board of Commissioners. And so also, we also allow in the commercial district, or um, this would be, we also allow cannabis testing facilities and the same thing, clarifying the setback, and then also uh, removing some of those items that are really licensure type requirements. Um, and then the same thing, uh, so this would be in the light industrial district, we allow cannabis cultivation. Um, we also allow uh, manufacturing, so essentially changing uh, the cannabis product into something else, and that's allowed within the I-1 I light industrial district. So essentially none of the uses have changed, it's really just the standards uh, that are under those types of uses. And then lastly, uh, so one thing that we would add, though, as far as the use would be in the light industrial district, uh, add medical cannabis dispensary. And the only th change that I, that I need to make, if your recommendation is for this ordinance, would be to take off the medical part on that top part there. So essentially just be cannabis dispensary on that part of it, too. So again, uh, these, or these regulations are already in place temporarily in the county. This would enact them permanently. No substantial changes other than identifying those things that are truly a license type standard and what standard is truly a zoning type standard for that. Um, we still will get building plans. We still review to make sure all of the structure types are being met. But as far as the operational standards, as far as how the building operates, the flow of it, the floor plan, that's all part of the commission review when they approve a license for that site. For, the, for that type of a use. And so, and I'll walk you through real quick, as the county has issued, um, I believe it's up to three, but I'm, I lost track, but I think it's three or four um, uh, facilities in the county. And the, the Board of Commissioners first approves a license. When they've obtained that license, they can come to our office for a building permit, and we issue a building permit based on these standards, okay? So with that, we have to answer any questions that you have for staff on this. Otherwise, this is an ordinance amendment. Um, it does require that you either give a recommendation of approval or denial uh, to the Board of Commissioners. And then that will be scheduled at the Board of Commissioners for a public hearing down the road. So, yeah. All right, thank you, Mr. Brown. Commissioners, questions for staff? I have a procedural question. So if we recommend approval and then it goes to the commission, and if they have changes based on this document that if we were to approve today, would it come back to us with any changes or is is the commission just, since they are the, the final say, would it just be amended there? Um, yeah, so they, so the Board of Commissioners under state statute can either accept, reject, or amend the recommendation of the Planning Commission. At times, they have sent things back to the Planning Commission for further re review and recommendation. But if they make any changes to your recommendation, it does require them to conduct a second public hearing at their level. So, 
but you know certainly if you if you as a board wanted it to come back if there's some changes you could certainly put that part of your motion or uh, presentation so thank you yep and you said the strikeouts are under their the licensing procedures like I noticed that you have to be 21 in the facility. That's going to be under the licensing procedure, correct? Yes. There, there are some things that they're going to be modifying in the license ordinance as well and things like that. And so the state's attorney and I have talked about, the deputy state's attorney and I have talked about, if some of those things are not in there, we'll make sure they're in there on the, on the adopted version of it. So anything that is currently struck out is in the original temporary ordinance? Correct. So that, and, and I wasn't here when this, when this was initially voted on, so this is just for my knowledge. So the reason we have struck out daycare centers? There is, there is in the licensing ordinance, there is a requirement of a daycare. And so there was always some discrepancy between our regulations as far as a daycare center and theirs as a daycare. They will remain a daycare under their license ordinance requirements. Okay. <clears throat> Is so, this, oh, go ahead. Oh, so my home daycare, I don't, you know, want a cannabis facility close to my home. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> This is uh, the language here. I mean, uh, as they go forward, whether it's production or processing or dispensing, those are all uh, conditional use items. Uh, so if someone in the public does have a objection similar to other things, they can come to us or the county commissioners to voice their opinion, or is it strictly if we approve this, it's a permitted process? So, so the, the board, it's, I'll start out, the Board of Commissioners license is a public hearing. And so you're able for every license that's issued for, for cannabis in Lincoln County does have action by the Board of Commissioners at a public hearing. And the zoning ordinance, it's a permitted special use. So as long as they meet the standards, it's issued a building permit. But that's after they've approved, been approved for a license by the Board of Commissioners. So some, so there will be a public input at some level of this. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's just not a duplicative part of it. Correct. So if, if it was a conditional use, that would require two public hearings and then potentially differing results. Mm -hmm. All right. Commissioners, any other questions for staff? When are you trying to form one over there? No. <laughs> I, you know, originally wanted to abstain from this whole issue, but I can't. Uh, you know, I, I would say that, that uh, we've learned a lot more since we did a year ago, um, and I think this has been vetted by our legal counsel, and we've you know, internally staff has really gone through this to, to make sure that it's appropriate for where we're at. And again, I, I think, as I mentioned, I think it's a great question is that there is, there is public process and the approval of it and the Board of Commissioners ultimately does decide where these are located at. <clears throat> and so this is just essentially what I would call enabling permanently what we adopted temporarily last year, minus some tweaks as far as some of those standards. So. And that last year we did the temporary just because we knew it was coming through the state and we wanted to have some rules in place. And now that we've had a, a year worth of legal advice and experts all across the state, then this is going from temporary to permanent with, with modifications. Well, I think the other point I'd make too is, again, we adapted this before there was any other regulation in the county. So this, you know... Um, but since that time, going through the licensing procedure with the Board of Commissioners is that, and I'm involved in that as well as taking a look at the site and the, and the facility, is that uh, it really, it's really duplicative. The things that I'm that proposing to strike here are really things that are covered under that process. And so it's 
you know, the duplicate part of it is, you know, it's just overburden, really, yeah. essentially. So, all right. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Thank you. All right, with that, do we take, do we take public input on this? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, anyone in public like to speak, come forward and speak one way or another for, for this item, please do so. <coughs> All right, seeing none, I will ask for a motion from the commission, whether to uh, approve the amendment or however you think. I just want to make sure we get this right. So I'm going to make a motion to approve based on what's been submitted here. But what is not in here, just to clarify, is in Section 7, we will need to strike medical, right, which is not currently in the draft that, that I have in front of me anyway. Right. So it would be as written with also striking the medical in Section 7. So that would be my motion. Yep, that sounds right. All right, we have a motion. Second, Johnson. All right, motion and a second. Uh, let's have some discussion, commissioners. My initial discussion would be really thanking staff on the amount of work that's gone into this process. You can tell it's been... It's been very thought out, very thorough, um, working with the attorneys. So, so for that, and the effort that goes into this, and and writing amendments to regulations, and um, so so kudos to staff. Um, I'm going to support the measure based on how it's written. So it's, uh, but I just wanted to make sure that that we thanked you guys for all the the work that was done. I would agree. This this uh, <laughs> this is a hard, tough subject. Mm -hmm. And for it to be new, I mean, really new for the state, for the county, for cities, for everything, and for them to start from scratch, basically, and, mm -hmm. and go through and, and do all this hard work and for us to, you know, it really helps us, mm -hmm. guides us well, so. Yeah, I agree. Um, this is a business that the South Dakota voters vote in favor for. Mm -hmm. And so our job is to put together what we need to do to, to operate as a, as a regular business, no matter what the business is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll go support it myself. All right, anything else? Was that section seven with the medical, was that the only place that that came into play or was? I believe it was struck out every, it, it was struck out everywhere it's else. Okay, that's the only place that. it wasn't struck out. Okay. All right, with that, uh, let's do roll call. Commissioner Hogan? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Green? Yes. And Commissioner Jungley is also a yes. All right, so then that, that passes, the amendment with the strikes and everything passes, so. All right, we're on to new business. Um, we'll take public input on any building eligible, eligibility transfers. Now, again, this conversation is about the transferring of eligibilities. There's no, uh, no, no intent to take them away or, or anything like that. That's just what it is, a transferring from one spot to another spot. Um, so we've had some public inputs in the past, and some of the commission thought, you know, just some of the, the, uh, the rules of transferring eligibility to different sections, um, you know, either the kidney corner, uh, touching through a road, you know, because they own half the road, uh, the number of them. So that's why we started having input, input, you know, from the public, because it's everyone's land, it's everyone's uh, housing eligibilities. So yeah, here's our, our third kind of public input on, on this one. So yeah, I'll ask anyone who wants to come and talk about the housing eligibility transfers. Oh, I do have one letter to read. I'll, oh. I'll get to that one here. Right. 
So the one letter. <clears throat> So one letter is from Doug Galby. Apologize if I did that wrong. Say hello, Toby. This is Doug. I'm responding to your letter sent out of 41922 for the 51622 public meeting on building housing old buildings. I've given this some thought and it's a challenging to provide a meaning, meaningful input that doesn't negatively affect landowners' rights. From my understanding, the original intent of the eligibility is for a farmer to have a small parcel of land to have a home when retiring, selling the farmland. It seems now that the, it seems now and things always evolve that people have taken advantage of this and most are non-farmers that have used it as a tool for profit. So I guess that would be a starting point to consider any change, but I have no suggestion how to define that. Here's what I came up with. To prevent excessive transfers or even slow down transfers, the county should consider modifying the definition of continuous from touching to more than six inches or even six feet. This would prevent transfers of land from owners who cross sections through common ownership of an intersection point. That's all I have for now. It's a tough, tough subject. Thank you. All right. So with that, yeah, I'll, we'll take public input on uh, on this. Hi there, Bethany Eric, four six seven four seven two hundred ninety first Street, Centerville, South Dakota five seven zero one four. When I read this, it appears to me that it takes away the eligibility for folks to sell their building eligibilities and make a profit. And in my opinion, this amendment should not take place because that is essentially stealing from the folks that have you hired. So I would stand in opposition of it. I would warn against the ability to limit folks from their freedom. And uh, perhaps I've understood it wrong. The staff report kind of indicates what benefits you guys, but it doesn't indicate what how that affects land ownership. And I'd like further explanation from staff as to how this affects folks' freedom and their ability to make an income in a year that has been extraordinarily tough with higher taxes. So as of right now, that's my opinion and that's my input. Does anybody have any questions for me? I think just to clarify it, yeah. um, there's we're just uh, seeking public input based on some other things that have come in front of the board. Okay. We're not specifically looking to limit anybody's, uh, not looking to take away right. eligibilities, obviously. No, we're not, but it uh, does limit how you can move them within the county, which does, think, yeah, and in that's what certain we're just, instances where there are industrial pollution or there's something other undesirable within your section, if the folks can't get those building eligibilities out of their harm's way, out of whatever you've you know given conditional use for, maybe that's medical cannabis, maybe there's folks with building eligibilities that they want to sell those and they want to get them out. Your this amendment ties their hands, and I would caution you strongly against accepting that change. Um, let's just let it roll as it is. Let's let folks have their freedom. So. Is that fair? That's absolutely fair, and I think that's all we're really looking for was th there's nothing on the table as there's far no as... There's no amendment. Yeah, there's, there's no nothing. amendment on no, the table. No, but, but I want you wanted input, and that's my input. I would caution you very, very strongly against limiting the freedom of folks who own these eligibilities and have for 100 years. Before you do that, you better think really, really long and hard about that. And I would, in, I would wish that you folks would stand on the side of freedom and leave it as it stands. Any further questions? Oh, thank okay. you. Thank Appreciate you. that. Thank you. All right. Any other public input on this uh, transfer of housing eligibilities? Yeah, please. Steve Holmberg, 4655-1, 293rd Street, Centerville, South Dakota, 
Um, I'm also a supervisor on Brooklyn Township, <coughs> and so here speaking on behalf of the township as much as anything, I guess. Um, my feeling on it is, uh, I believe it was in 95 that they limited it to one uh, eligibility per 40 acres or quarter of a quarter. And uh, then they did allow that to be moved around a little bit in that section. but. But to now start to allow people with contiguous acreages, some of these people own 14 quarters of land, uh, all those eligibilities could be moved down where you would have 30 people, you'd have a small city in one, in one corner of a section. And uh, being on a township, a board, trying to deal with the changes that would bring, um, I'm opposed to it. I'm a landowner also, but uh, I think what you have there is, is been sufficient and that we do not need to change this to uh, make a lot of profit for a few people trying to bunch all these up in, into one, one area. Uh, you have T in Harrisburg with their uh, planning that's around those areas there where they can say what they will allow and that's fine. But I think as far as Lincoln County, especially the southern portion here where it's uh, farmland, where uh, you know I'm, I live on a homestead, I, I don't want some of these things changed. And, and having all these people brought into one small area and changing, changing a lifestyle. And, it, and it's kind of unfair to someone that's already there if all of a sudden you allow 30 people to move within across the road from them also. So my feeling is, I guess, uh, being a landowner and also a, a township supervisor, I would prefer that you would leave it basically the way it is, four of them in that section or that one-fourth of a section and uh, leave the eligibilities that way. And I know that's not what you're deciding now, but that's my input is I don't, I don't want to uh, have this change to benefit uh, certain contractors or, or entrepreneurs that are trying to use this eligibility to basically line their pockets. Thank you. Thank you. And one thing I would maybe add, Steve, just to your comments is I, the, the, I think that's maybe the issue we're trying to address now because that's really not how it is right now. Since 2009, mm -hmm. they have it so you can move the eligibilities and make those small. I mean, mm -hmm. they have to come through the, our processes, but um, I think that that was kind of the genesis of how we said, hey, we do need to seek, especially, I think the take home from last month's meeting was that we need to somehow get the townships on board, especially if we're, if, if they're moving between townships or, you know, if there needs to be a sign off process added at the township level um, for such an instance. Because right now, yes, the, the eligibilities exist via the density zoning, I think, is the term they use um, of the one per quarter quarter, mm -hmm. but they they can be moved, you know, amongst people that don't, you know, so there could be five, six, eight, uh, you know, in a lot of areas amongst common landowners or purchased land or, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, I think that's, you know, not to get ahead of you, Jerry, but I, I think that's really what we're here to listen to and help guide policy. It's certainly not to steal anybody's eligibilities or their, you know, um, things like that, but we're just trying to come up with public input, right? Yep. Welcome. Welcome. Um, I just wanted to say that I think part could, of this Could problem, you do your uh, name and address for yeah. the record? Anthony Jeans, Ventura, 477 Street, Street, Hudson, South Dakota, 57034. Thank you. I think part of the problem is, is you have these four ghost houses that can be built anywhere in a quarter. 
And what planning and zoning has not done is respected those eligibility rights. So if somebody moves next door and goes, they don't, they don't measure to the house, well, if there's no living house, there's no measurement to protect the neighbors next door, then you're forcing that person to potentially sell or move that eligibility. So you gotta start getting something on the record to protect those houses and eligibilities at the property line. That's the main fight. It always has been, but the discussions you make and the decisions you make affect the people next door. And that affects their financial decisions. And it has to stop at the property line. Thank you. Thank you. All right, any other input? Yes, sir. Dwayne Carlson, uh, 29287. 467, uh, Centerville, South Dakota. We got our notices that the last meeting was gonna happen an hour or two before the meeting happened. They came out the they came out way too late. We need to have these notifications come out in a timely manner so we can, I mean, we came home from work, got our mail, and there was no way to get to the meeting, so. Mm -hmm. These eligibilities are something that has been a problem lately, and I don't know how you can justify letting corporate business come into our farming community and possibly take land and make it into a housing development for themselves. This is something that could happen um, with the transfer of eligibilities. We also have lines in between our townships that are really close. The, the township, say to the north of Brooklyn Township, has a, a large farm that could expand even more and have housing eligibilities that affect our township. And it's just across the road. so. Keep that in mind when these things come up, that local farms are affected by corporate farming. Thank you. Thank you. All right, anybody else like to speak on that? Yes, ma'am. Marlene Sweeter, 47, 158, 283rd Street, Worthing. And I am here uh, on behalf of Lynn Township. Um, Lynn Township um, shares a road with La Valley. There are housing el eligibilities from both sides, and we now have 14 approaches on one mile for the four, six, eight, nine houses that are on that mile, and then let alone the approaches to the road to the back. Um, that kind of happened without our knowledge till we realized that those housing eligibilities had all been moved to one mile. One, and, and the problem being is that one side of the road is La Valley Township, the other side is Lynn Township. So I think we're trying, what Lynn Township is trying to do is to put together some type um, of resolution to limit at least the approaches on our roads. We weren't aware, I, it's my understanding that these eligibilities were moved some time ago. Um, if there's some way that the, the townships can be a part of how those eligibilities are placed. Um, I know we had another instance in Lynn Township where we didn't know there were eligibilities that were being replaced and we had three of them right next to each other again. Um, so it becomes more and more of a concern because now we have roads that aren't adequate to handle that much traffic. We don't have, um, you know, the township doesn't have the money to seek engineers to help us structure those roads. Um, those people, um, you know, they, they like the same, they don't like the dirt, they don't like the gravel. Um, so that becomes an issue because there are farmers that drive by um, doing their daily duties. Um, speed is a big concern, and I got that. I understand that when you have that much traffic on a road, that speed becomes an issue. Um, there are a lot of issues that, you know, as a township, we don't have a lot of the, the same, you know, same ways to, to handle all of those things. Our boards 
I, I guess we're just doing growing pains in Lynn Township is what I'm saying. And so if there's any way um, that the townships can be involved with the movement of those eligibilities, um, I, I guess they're going to happen. We know that we're growing. Um, but we have to be able to accommodate those growing pains as well. And when you have that many houses on one road, the next mile, I believe, has six houses on it. So we're looking at a two-mile stretch that, that really puts a, a damper on, on how we're going to handle all of that traffic and, and make it safe for those people as well. Um, you know, our township roads are certainly not the same as, as, a, as a county road. We don't have engineers to help us. We don't have... Uh, and we don't have the affordability to get those engineers to help us. Um, we're trying to put together something to at least limit that. Um, I mean, if you're looking at someone who's going to put together, you know, that many houses in one road, I think the townships really have to be involved in that. Um, I think those people also have to be made aware that this is a township road um, and doesn't have the same... Um, we, we don't just don't have the same opportunities that that a hard surface road does, and we certainly can't hard surface it or make it safe for those people. So, I, I, like I say, I would just like us to, to be able to be aware of, and if we are, I, I know there are circumstances where someone could make at least 32 housing eligibilities. Um, we, we, those have to be worked out with the township. Um, if those people are going to be adequately served um, and travel those roads. So, thank you. Thank you, Marlis. No, and I think that's a good point, too. I mean, maybe the township has to sign off on a road before, or, or a driveway permit anyway, before mm -hmm. allowing the transit. Is it thought? I think that's absolutely imperative that the townships are involved. I mean, especially with what we just been through the past couple months when we moved, how many was that? Five eligibilities? Four. Four mm -hmm. from one township over to the other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then the one that we're taking the eligibilities from, so they're losing $2 million, but yet they still have to take care of the road. I think it's imperative that we get the, the townships involved because they need to have a heads up. They have to, the driveways, they have to, they have to have a say in what's happening in the townships. I mean, the county's not the one taking care of the roads. That's a lot of extra traffic going on that road. I, I appreciate even earlier today, you know, this is the first since I've been here that I've seen that, you know, we have a letter from La Valley Township saying that we approve the driveway for, right. for the stable, right? You exactly. know, so for us, I think that, like for me, seeing that, you know, that's a benefit. Um, I was just wondering the process, and um, I don't know if Ms. Sweeter's time's up, but the, the process that, that Lynn Township goes through for approving or denying driveways, um, you know, because when we have these conversations in our meetings, a lot of it, like we come back to, well, the township has the ability to not approve a driveway, mm -hmm. right? But what is the reality of what the townships go through in in determining whether or not, you know, an applicant comes forward with a driveway that you use to say yes or no, or, you know, what percentage of those are approved versus denied? So it, if you wanted to weigh in or have the knowledge of. If I could just add to that, the problem is, is, you know, someone comes to the to the township and says, here, sign this, I'm putting an eligibility in. That's fine, but so what right do we have to say after someone has sold that piece of property to someone who's going to build a new home and say, oh, sorry, you can't have a driveway there. I, I mean, so so that's why I say we have to find a way to make it work because you certainly can't sell, sell someone a piece of property to build a home on that needs a driveway and the township says, oh, sorry, can't do it. We don't want, we don't want that many driveways there. So that's why we're trying to come up with something. But I think somewhere along the line, we have to be able to let the townships know as well as those people selling those eligibilities know what's going on because I mean, we had an instance where we weren't going to sign, you know, sign that 
driveway permit because for number one, it was too close to the corner. Well, what could the person do that had just paid, you know, money for that land and was already ready to build a home? Um, they, I, I mean, we, that's bad for them as well. Um, so I think we really need to find a way to, to work with someone to take care of these, you know, to handle the eligibilities that are being moved. Thank you. All right. Does anybody else like to speak on the uh, manner of moving housing eligibilities? All right. I did, Miss <clears throat> Miss Chairman. I did get I did get a phone call uh, this morning from Grant Township, <clears throat> and of course the weather was nice, so most of those individuals are out in the fields today, probably tonight. Um, so Arlen and I won't really quote everything that him and I talked about, but he really talked about some of the things that we that, that we previously heard. Um, he he noted that. Um, that he feels that it's hurting egg prices with the eligibilities, the sales that these eligibilities are going for. Um, he has well brought up the driveway permitting process. He more aligned it with is that Grant Township was going to be adopting regulations similar to our county highway department has for driveway permitting um, as far as application type materials and as far as standards for what um, uh, driveways will be permitted. Um, so if you're not familiar with the county, uh, any county road, there's standards as far as how far those can be apart, how close they can be to intersections. And, and so uh, he noted that Grant Township would probably be adopting some of those same regulations. Um, and, you know, and he, he, he addressed the thing that, uh, that, you know, that everyone's talked about tonight is, is, that, um, is that, you know, to work towards being prepared for some of these things in advance. Um, and really, you know, there's kind of two parts to that process, and that there is a platting process when people sell property, um, but essentially those are just transfer transfer of property rights. Essentially, you're selling those property rights. At that time, we don't get any information as far as if there's going to be a driveway, how many driveways there's going to be um, at those times, and at and the, we sign off as well as the township does initially to those transfers of sales. So we do know that there's property being transferred. We don't know where, how, or when it's going to be developed at that stage. Um, and then beyond that, I, I think, you know, staff, we've identified some changes, you know, through these last three months. We've taken public input from, uh, from individuals. Um, and, you know, a lot of the things that, that we do um, at the time, you know, and maybe a couple of years ago, we started notifying the townships through the clerk. Um, and so sometimes those messages got or didn't get to them. And, and th that communication is at the same time as that all the neighbors are notified. So within 10 days um, of this public hearing, they typically get notified. But we've started adding all township officials within that township to the mailing list. And so hopefully that gets to all of them. Um, and we've seen, you know, a little bit better communication with some of them calling us back and letting us know some concerns or questions they have. Um, but those are some things we need to work on that part of it. Um, and again, you know, as Commissioner Johnson pointed out, as you pointed out too, is there is no amendment tonight. Uh, the current the regulations that are on the screen are the current standards for it. Um, the only change was in 1995 when, the, when Lincoln County adopted density zoning, it was a standard that you couldn't move it more than, than, a, than one mile, essentially a section. And in 2009, as Commissioner Johnson pointed out, that was changed to what this currently is which can go as long as it's contiguous under the same ownership. Um, and so in order to do that, though, you have to get a conditional use permit. So we do have a public hearing. We do go through that process. The challenge, though, that, that I've noted and that you've all noted before, though, is, is that at that time, they don't tell us where it's going. They just say it's moving from this parcel to this parcel. Um, and so we don't know, and, and quite frankly, I don't know if they know either until they have someone interested in buying it and how many acres they want and where it's, you know, what those people want. Some people like water, some people don't like water, some people like gravel, some people like hard surface, you know, it's, and so, I, you know, I, I don't know what to tighten it up. I don't know what that means, and, and I certainly don't want to take away the eligibilities from anybody. I don't think anybody does. I think that like anything, we're just going through this process because we've heard complaints. I mean, we've heard issues that are arising because of this. And I know that it's a concern of um, some of our commissioners, and some of those commissioners can be here tonight to kind of talk about that as well, too. But 
Um, so that I jumped into there a little bit more, but I guess that's kind of uh, the feeling of it. And again, you know, we apologize for the late, late notice on the previous meeting, but we did send out the day after the meeting last month, which was the intent of this meeting. We sent to every single township, every single individual on the township, approximately a month before this meeting. Um, and so uh, that the intent of this is public input. Um, hopefully, I, I, I haven't heard any discussion amongst you if you want to make any changes. At that time, it would require public hearing and require public input and ultimately a decision by the Board of Commissioners. But as Commissioner Poppins pointed out, mm -hmm. there is no direction from the Board of Commissioners at this time to make any changes to these regulations. Toby, just a quick question. I think last month we were all a little... Um, there, there was, it wasn't exactly clear when somebody wants to move, is it three eligibilities that when those are moved, it triggers going into a, a plat process? So in, in other words, if, we, if, if somebody moves an eligibility one month and does it one at a time, I mean, we move them, we approve them, and we never hear from them again, but like if somebody wants to move four of them, then all of a sudden they have to have a, a platted process similar to like a rural residential plan. So, so the um, two, two kind of come, you know, or complexities there. So the first thing is that any transfer of one eligibility or however many requires a conditional use permit. Correct. And so after they've been transferred, when we plat those, um, as long as there's not more than, than essentially, I think it's four, then they don't have to have a subdivision plan. Or the subdivision plan. So if, they, so if they plat one at a time, which is what we're seeing they're doing because they only sell one at a time, uh, then, then they do not require a subdivision plan under the ordinance. What would, I think oh, no. one other thing that I took home and thought about after the last month's meeting was we get these little clusters of houses built and if they build a cluster of houses with that are A1 agriculture, somebody can build a barn, have their chickens, feed a few cattle, whatever they want to do there. And if they move on to the same size lot in a rural residential area and want to have their horse barn, then they have to come to us and then it's a, a conditional use. But I don't think the general person moving to Lincoln County, if they see a bunch of houses out that aren't in the town, I don't think they know the difference between that. And I don't know if that's, is that being communicated well to new buyers or prospective buyers, or is that something we need to address in the same, do you guys know mm -hmm. what I mean? Uh, that's going to be problem number two down the road. Yeah, <laughs> right. So, so the challenge is, is I totally agree with you, is that clustering of these eligibilities is going to cause problems down the road because the zoning of it's not changing. It's right. agriculture. They can have livestock. And I'm not saying that's bad, but I agree with you that people that are buying some of these properties in the rural area aren't anticipating that it's ag. They're anticipating it's residential. Right. Or vice versa, the person that moves mm -hmm. to the Correct. country thinking they want to have their four horses out there, Correct. all of a sudden they can't and their neighbors are mad at them because this is a residential area, not agricultural. Correct. Whereas if you move to the buildings that we approved last month, they can do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of change and a lot of growth that we're experiencing right now. And it's, you know, and I think it's always uh, advantageous to take a look at the ordinances. We, we get busy with the applications that we have and some of the, you know, these monthly things that we deal with on a regular basis. But, and that's why I've said before is, is that I think this is another issue that is the impetus for us updating our comprehensive plan moving forward is to take a look at these issues. You know, as you can see, even tonight, we heard both sides of the spectrum. One individual talking about don't take them away. The other one saying, well, yeah, but we have concerns about this. I mean, and that's really where it is in the county right now. And, and like I've said, I mean, we it's it's unbelievable how much residential single family dwellings we're permitting this year even you know and last year it's it's unbelievable in the rural area um, 
not in the cities but in the rural area. And so I, I, I agree with the townships. I agree with everybody. We're all in the same boat that this, this is, this is uh, going on, a lot of issues with it, good, bad, likewise. Um, and so communication is important. We'll go through it. Um, I think I think you've spoken, the board's spoken loudly that you do want township involvement in these. We'll make sure that that happens, you know, to, to reach out to them and make sure that they, like tonight, to make sure that they, you know, give us some comment on the driveway part of it. Um, ultimately, though, it is a challenge, like uh, Ms. Sweeter said, is, you know, how do, how do we say no to these if they meet all of the standard requirements or we don't have standard requirements for this type of a thing? So I think that's the important thing that I think you as a board wanted to bring up is, you know, should these standards be strengthened or clarified or identified and, you know, changed? But, you know, it's it's a tough issue because there's a lot of people say yes or no to both sides of it. So. Toby, did you say, like, if somebody sells the land or, or an eligibility or whatnot, the county and the township at the sale of it are involved right or have to sign off on it at, at the plat process at the plat process yep. right yep. so at that point can't you tell them hey about the driveway i mean you need to let them know then but they've already purchased well you know i i think that's maybe where the township should come in because, I mean, obviously, I think if you've got a Harrisburg address or a T address, it's probably a lot different mm -hmm. set of problems than right, if you have a Centerville right. or a Beersford address. And, and if if uh, the township would have to sign off on that plat process at the sale, right. it would and help believe well, Right, at be, the sale would be... There might be a lot of times they don't know, though. They just say, we have 40 acres in a housing old building. They don't know they're not going to plat it unless they know it's over here or here. Oh, they might not true. do anything for 10, 15 years. That's true. It's true. Well, but that's a, I think it's a little different if somebody buys 40 acres. Mm -hmm. If someone's just buying the eligibility, there should almost be a set of, at some point, you should have to so sign I think, off. Yeah, I mean, one option would be that the township say, hey, just standardize. We only allow four driveways per mile. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then someone goes and looks and buys this or whatever, they say, hey, there's there's already four here. This might not be a good option for me. Right. Having right. those standards in place. But there again, that might be where the township needs to come in because, I, I mean, I'm not against what Marlene was talking about, but there was comment last month that, hey, there was somebody I think said we'd just as soon have all the residences on one mile and keep them away other traffic away from the other farm sites you know so that that's the other side of the, that's the other comment we heard there too so right and no, toby I, I have one more question so for instance last month we, we were talking about subdivisions so if you already have three houses and you were saying if they move one at a time then it doesn't count as a subdivision so if you already have three houses and you bring one in at a time Anything over three is a subdivision, correct? On the plat. On the plat. But that's only if they touch, right? Only if they touch. On no. the plat. If they plat all at the same time, yes. If they plat one at a time, one a year, one a month, then it does not trigger them. And that was that my concern that I had addressed last month was, well, who's to say that once we move these, like, there's nothing that is, you know, when they sell them that is going to trigger a rural residential right. subdivision right that's why that was a tough call because the rules on the book was and there again it's not a rural residential subdivision it's an a1 agriculture yeah. subdivision right. that allows for agriculture right <clears throat> so we've had three public inputs now i mean <laughs> well i mean we've got a good variety we've talked to townships for and against we've heard different perspectives from uh landowners people that want to move in you know uh, the farmers that work there or live there uh we we've heard from i think a good round of mm -hmm. from everyone so now it, i think it's up to us whether we suggest a change ask staff to adjust this or adjust that or or we sit about think about for a month then 
maybe I'll bring proposals for next month. I, I, do you have any uh, suggestions, Mr. Brown? Well, I would definitely wait till next month to have a board discussion so you have a full board um, to go through it. Um, but, you know, as staff, I don't know what the change would be. You mm -hmm. know, it's, it's complicated beyond complicated as far as where we're at with it. But um, I think the things, though, that we've identified as far as communication, I think that's something we've already improved upon um, as best we can. Um, the transfer of eligibilities, that's really, you know, I've heard from the board that when we do these by conditional use permit, you're going to want to know from the township what their mm -hmm. thoughts are. And then I, I think beyond that is we, we also might have to get to a point where when they're moving these is that they do show us a site plan of where it's going to go. Absolutely. You know, and granted that's, you know, like tonight, I mean, it's, you know, it's happened to change if, you know, somebody says, well, I'd rather move it this way or that way, but we need to at least have a visual so we can kind of identify where those things are. You know, the, the biggest complication is going to be the roads, though. Mm -hmm. And the reality of it is, is that, you know, a, a township is a separate political subdivision. They're like us. They're subdivisions of the state. And so um, I think uh, um, that, that, and I think a lot of them are working with our highway department to adopt some of the same regulations that our, that our county has, which is critical to... Mm -hmm. You know, we don't want to, I don't want to see 20 houses on a, on a road. You know, I mean, that's, that's a bad idea. Beyond that, the other issue is, is that, um, you know, the, the other issue we don't talk about is, is all this is that within those areas, and I'll pull that map up, is So, you know, beyond this, these areas is, and this is really affects us up in the northern part of the county, but the, these areas that are in this, what I'll call pink, you know, is, is, is purplish color. Those, we don't have any jurisdiction over subdivision, meaning that the cities approve those. So we don't, you know, they come in and they go here, we want a building permit. Well, we, we don't, we had no idea. You know, we're in the same boat as the township in those ones. We had no idea that the land was transferred because we didn't see the plats, didn't know anything about it. So, you know, there's some of those areas, too, that, that you know, like I said, it's a complex issue. But the, the majority of the growth area in the northern part of the county, we, we don't know uh, when they're going to be placing eligibility. We know when they're transferring them. That has to go through, the, through our office and this board. But the subdivision in those areas is, is under the jurisdictions of those cities. <clears throat> Toby, can a township adopt their own plans? Or, I mean, uh, just not that we need more regulation on everybody, but, I mean, could a township at their township meeting get together and say that we're just not going to allow areas of five on a quarter or more than four per quarter or that's probably a legal question i guess yeah i'll defer on that one but yeah. but but um yeah they're a political subdivision they can they can adopt standards regulations for their for their responsibilities i mean to address like Dwayne's comment about yeah. how you know certain landowners could have 30 or more subdivision i mean or uh houses and if the township decides hey we just don't want to deal with that i mean yeah. maybe that's some maybe that's a route a township could go i guess well and again you know the county we 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 uh we adopted a master transportation plan three years ago and at that time, before that, we didn't have any standards really in place either. Um, and so since that time, we adapted really the state standards. The state's been doing this. I mean, if you go along the state roads, you see shared driveways, you see service roads, you see those different types of things. 
and and so it's not all that recent that the county's been doing it, you know, as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, those are all, and, and essentially, you're not taking away the rights of those people from access to their property. You're just restricting the amount of access that those driveways have. So you're limiting the amount of driveways uh, access onto the public roads. So like Marlene said, they had like 14 approaches in one mile. I mean, holy Hannah, <laughs> that's a lot. Um, and the, the housing eligibility, is my understanding, were moved some time ago, so we had no idea, and they were sold one at a time. You know, so somebody decided to build here, okay. Well, then they sold this piece, and then they sold this piece, so we really, and we don't have anything in place. We're working on putting something in right. place, but. We put easements in, in place to put multiple driveways into one mm -hmm. to get right. that reduced. Right. Yep. Well, one example, I bought a property here a year and a half ago. It was on a county road, had one building out, building out eligibility, but there was, a road, there was a house on one end of the property, house on the other end of the property. I looked at putting in the driveway, and the superintendent asked me to share with them those existing driveways just so there's not another approach. You know, that's because they have their standards and only so many per mile and whatnot. And I ended up selling the property, never did anything with it. I know I completely understand for it's also a safety perspective. If you got mm -hmm. someone going down your highway at 55 and someone stops right. and turn in driveway, stop and turn the driveway. I mean, that's that's a safety issue also. So that's another reason for this for those standards. Well, the thing, you know, and the thing we don't think about either because we just see them as rural roads, but these are really arterial type roads. I mean, you know, these aren't local roads that that are out there, I mean, and things like that. And we need to anticipate in the future that's what's gonna be like too. You know, and, and you know, when you, some of the things you see like on 41st Street and stuff like that in Sioux Falls, what makes it dangerous is the amount of driveways, ingress, egress going on to the road. And so that's something we need to advance, you know, and take a look at as far as, you know, and this, this is really, bottom line, it's about safety, about anything is, and we wanna make sure that the, yes. that the traveling public is safe out there with some of those things. But, you know, I appreciate this discussion we've had. I mean, this is a good planning discussion, and planning and, and the issues we're dealing with are tough. You know, I mean, it's, it's tough to come up with, with answers, but I, I think it, it was responsible of the planning commission because the, this goes back to the not the last two months, but it was previous to that where we had to transfer eligibility. The first time in the history of Lincoln County that one got appealed to the Board of Commissioners was the decision of a transfer of a building eligibility. You know, we've been doing trans. You know, we've been doing billing eligibility transfers since 1995, and not one had been appealed until this year. And so I think that was a concern too. Is is that you know, and, and some of those neighbors were saying, if you recall, that issue was is that you know they counted. And they said, well, there's no eligibilities here. Well, then they moved one in, and then that obviously you know impacted those people that lived in that area that thought, well, I built a house here, I lived here, and I never thought there would be another house here. You know, so those are the issues that you're dealing with on the flip side as well, too. So, <clears throat> but I would just recommend that uh, um, you put this as a discussion under new business, but public input, you know, I, I would assume you've taken enough public input, but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. certainly if you want to discuss next month and just see where the board wants to go with it. So, <clears throat> oh, I, why do you go ahead? No, I just think, for me, I definitely just want to see that, especially when we're moving from one township to another, I want I want both townships working together with the county on it and in agreement before the, those eligibilities are, are even brought to us, I think, because that just causes too many problems. And, boy, seeing that revenue going from one to another and then the, the one losing, having it to pay the money and, and the labor and the cost and taking care of the roads is just that, I mean, to townships, they don't have the money to begin with. And that's just devastating to them losing, losing, losing that revenue and then, but still having to pay to take care of the roads. It's just, so I think we definitely just need to, especially in those instances, have to have, have to have to have to have the townships in agreements. All right. Well, let's, uh, I'll have her thoughts and bring a proposal or a sentence or or nothing. If you think you make no changes, 
don't we don't have to make a change. <laughs> but uh, no, let's uh, everyone bring something forward. We'll do new business next month and mm -hmm. see where it goes. You guys good with discussion for the night on this one? Yeah. All right, Mr. Brown, we have item number two under new business. Uh, sure, Mr. Chairman. So uh, action of the Board of Commissioners since your last planning commission meeting was last week on the 10th. The Board of Commissioners did approve the Spielman Prairie Acres uh, subdivision plan. And so if you recall, the Spielman Prairie Acres subdivision is just to the, I think it's a mile and a half to the west of the city of T, uh, directly off of uh, 272nd or 106. Um, and that's a 63 lot uh, rural residential single family development. Um, that was approved in 2014 as a rezone, and so it's finally been been approved for the subdivision part of it. So that should be developing pretty quickly. I have a question on that, Mr. Brown. So the <laughs> developers on that had started. I mean, it was. It's been. I mean, well on its way prior to the 10th of May, what, what would have happened if the county commission would have denied that? It would have had to have been returned to what it was prior. So that is solely at the developer's... Correct. Uh, Cost. I guess thoughts if that's a good idea to start prior to being... No, yeah. it's not a good idea. So, so the county, and this is something we're working on, the county does not have a grading permit. So there's nothing to prevent a landowner from grading their property. Okay. But um, <clears throat> you approved, the Planning Commission approved the preliminary plan in, I think it was November of last year. Correct. And so staff worked with them. They essentially turned in more than a preliminary plan. They turned in a final development plan, essentially. Um, so that fully vetted the drainage, the grading, and everything that was associated with it. Um, for the first time in Lincoln County, all of those lots will be graded out above the floodplain. And so I think that's, uh, uh, you know, that's a concern that we always have. You know, not necessarily just downstream flooding, but it's also the properties that we're building to make sure that they're not impacted by risk flooding. But that'll be a 63 lot development that we'll start seeing development pretty shortly on that one. So uh, that was the only action that the board had since your last planning commission meeting. All right. Thank you for the update, Mr. Brown. All right, commissioners, any, anything else or we can move for adjournment? We can talk after. Is there going to be more public input on the zoning next month or is there any, are you going to take any more input on that? Or on the uh, okay. housing eligibility housing move? Eligibility. So, no, yes and no. So there won't be any input on that directly. But if we make any changes, like amendments or whatnot, then that goes for public input. So you could input on that. Say, for example, we'd say, hey, those four building eligibilities have to stay within that section. They can't go anywhere else. That would be amendments. And then that would go out for public input for everyone to talk on. All right, with that, uh, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second, Johnson. Motion is second. All those in favor say aye. 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 We're adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.